There are few people whom I really love, and even fewer of whom I think well. The more I see of the world, the more I am dissatisfied with it. I shall never understand why you go through the world determined to be displeased with everything and everyone in it. It seems to me to show an abominable sort of conceited independence. Did you ever meet such a proud, disagreeable man? Obstinate, headstrong girl, I'm ashamed of you. Your defect is a propensity to hate everyone. Well, yours is willfully to misunderstand them. We're each of an unsocial, taciturn disposition. I'm willing to speak unless we expect to say something that will amaze the whole room. We neither of us perform to strangers. Thank you, madam. I rarely dance. I believe, ma'am, I may safely promise you never to dance with Mr. Darcy. I know you find great enjoyment in professing opinions which are not your own. Which is not handsome enough to tempt me. Had you behaved in a more gentlemanlike manner? Could you expect me to rejoice in the inferiority of your connections? I cannot bear to think that he is alive in the world. Or at least in that I may defend myself. And thinking ill of me. She was persuaded to believe herself in love and to consent to an elopement. She was then but 15 years old. Do you think any consideration would tempt me to accept the man who's been the means of ruining the happiness of her most beloved sister? I can go no longer without thanking you for your kindness to my poor sister. Yeah, I can't imagine what has affected this transformation. Can you not? I've been meditating on the very great pleasure which a pair of fine eyes and the face of a pretty woman can bestow. And he is a handsome gentleman, is he not, ma'am? Yes, very handsome. Mr. Darcy, of all men, who never looks at a woman except to see a blemish. But your good opinion is rarely bestowed and therefore more worth the earning. I'm afraid, Mr. Darcy, that this escapade may have affected your admiration for her fine eyes. Not at all. They were brightened by the exercise. You all known to be a proud, unpleasant sort of man. This would be nothing if you really liked him. I do. I have not that talent which some possess of conversing easily with strangers. Indeed, he has no improper pride. I hope that your family is in good health. Uh, yes, I believe she's a little better. Good God, what is the matter? Darcy, you were unwell. But I fear Mr. Darcy is mourning the loss of Miss Eliza Bennet. What? If he has withdrawn his high opinion of you now, why should you care? I shall never see him again. I shall come to this. I shall. Mr. Oh, what's his name? You know that tall, proud one. Miss Bennet. Mr. Darcy. Miss Bennet. I did not expect to see you, sir. Happiness in marriage is entirely a matter of chance, you know. There will always be vexation and grief. I felt you were the last man in the world whom I could ever marry. And it is better to know in advance as little as possible of the defects of your marriage partner. She did not know. <laughs> I am determined but the very deepest love will induce me into matrimony. You must allow me to tell you how ardently I admire and love you. My feelings are so different. Do you admit that you were in the wrong? They are quite the opposite. Utterly and completely. <laughs>